to the live. Um, it's Friday. I'm riding around on Finch, and uh, yeah, well, as the as the title says, my show plans have been upended. George, which is like a super huge step because uh, it's a little bit of a push, um, but and I don't feel entirely ready for pre St. George. But I, that said, I also kind of never feel all the way ready. Um, so I was going to enter him in this March show in Temecula. But then with um, in our area, we have this huge EHV1 outbreak. Um, and that is happening at a horse show that is in Thermal. Um, it happened with mostly hunter jumpers out there in the desert. And there's now been two horses that have passed away. Um, and so it's really, for me, it's not worth it at that moment in time to be entering a show. Um, hi, Lori. Um, yeah, it's super, it's really a bummer. Um, but it is kind of uh, the world. We've had this before um, in thermal. Um, and so, yeah, I guess we'll just put the show plans on hold, stay here in this beautiful place with Vinci and train away at home, getting ready, getting more confirmed. Um, yeah, and hope all is okay and well with the horses. I know a few people returned from that show and they're kind of in quarantine or, uh, checking the temp uh, horses that returned from that show. So I, I hope all of those are okay and everything kind of calms down with all of that. But in the meantime, um, yeah, we're not going to go to any shows and um, we'll stay home and train and work on things. As for Finch, um, I am working... On, on getting everything more confirmed. Uh, with him, the changes have taken some time to teach him. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is he's a horse that always tries to keep. Um, and that's a good thing, but that's also with the changes that can be sometimes hard. With these horses that really want to do things for you, they can be anticipating the changes. Uh, they don't always wait for the aids. Um, they don't always wait for the change. And in my experience, the changes are one of the things that take the longest amount of time to teach. It takes, it takes longer for them to get really confirmed and understanding the aid. Um, longer than the Piaf, longer than the Passage, and in a different way. Um, the changes happen in a moment. Uh, in a moment of the canter, you aid for the change and you have to be really synced up with your horse and the horse has to wait for you and be supple and prepared and understand what's going on. Um, so they take a lot of time to teach them and get them really confirmed. Um, I've been working on him. I can't really show you because I can't ride the changes one-handed, but... Um, one thing that I find that's really important with the changes, the flying changes, is being able to bend them inside, being able to straighten them, being able to bend them outside or counter flex them um, and have them wait for you for the change in your legs, um, which then dictate to, to do the flying change. So a lot of people get in the habit of riding if we're cantering right, we're bending to the right. And if we're cantering left, we're bending to the left. And that sets up a problem for the changes that as soon as we prepare the bend to the left or change directions, they think about doing the change. And so for me, what I would like to work on is being able to can left, use the flexion, to right flexion as I'm cantering left 
So right flexion as I'm cantering left. And then that my legs are still saying canter left. So my outside leg is back. My inside leg is forward supporting at the girth. And I can change that flexion. Left lead canter, bending left. Left lead canter, bending right. Um, and get really good control over the bend and control over the suppleness and control over the body. Um, now, the, the better I can control the bend and condition that is going to be it's going to be easier for them to do the change. So when the horses block us um, or they stop us from positioning the body, what happens is then they fall into a position that makes the work harder for them. Um, so if they're falling against the leg or not uh, allowing us to position the body as we want, what happens is it becomes harder for them to do the change. Um, and so then if we ignore that and we're riding tempes or whatever, um, what happens is maybe we set up the first change well and then the haunches starts falling. So we're going, imagine we're going on the left lead here. We ride the change to the right. And then as soon as we ride the change to the right, the haunches starts falling. So let me see, as I get closer to the mirror, maybe I can show you. We ride the change to the right and the haunches starts falling this way. And then when we're, they can't position the high, um, it becomes a problem where like you can't support the horse and then you put them in a position where they're set up to fail. It's, it's too difficult for them to do the change. So then they do it late. They don't do it at all. Um, so with Finch, it's been really helpful to go like a few things to work on my quarter lines toward the mirrors. If you don't have mirrors, you can either have somebody, um, sit, sit on the quarter lines and tell you, or, um, if you do have mirrors, it's such good feedback to ride quarter line toward the mirror and be able to work change to the off lead, change back and work on that straightness. And what you want to do is you're going to feel the, the loss of control. So you're going to ride a single change and then you're going to feel like, oh crap, like I lost the, the straightness. I lost the control of the hind leg. And take your time with that. So ride the first change, collect, ride a little forward, ride the first change. When you lose the control, take the time to get the positioning back before you ask for the second change. Um, the better tempo control you have, the better ability you have to collect them is gonna give you more time. If they're just running away with you and aren't collecting, that's gonna mean that your quarter line is gonna go by really quickly. So don't be afraid to bring them back toward pirouette canter. Really collect them, work on the straightness, work on the bending, get them to let go get them to let you position the hind leg, little forward, ride the change, and then half alt, bring them back again. Um, that's gonna bring in a lot of, of organization to those changes. And then in terms of starting the tempes, and this is a little bit where I am with Finch, you have to, and, and this is a, a concept that I apply to a lot of different things in horse training, but you have to advance, you have to try the tempes, maybe four, three, four tempes or three, three tempes. Um, and then you have to be unafraid to go backwards, okay? So just because you try the fours or you try the threes in a ride, don't be afraid to go back to just either the quarter line or on the rail or just the single changes. Don't be afraid in the training to set your ego aside. Don't get stuck on this mission of we're going to get the threes today. We're going to get the fours today. That's a mistake. Try them. If they happen, great. Give them a break. Reward them. If they don't happen, simplify and refine. Um, go back to the more basic things and then confirm those basic things and then try again. So you're in this circle where if you're just stuck in the basic stuff and you're never trying 
um, to advance, you're going to be stuck there. So you, the, the right thing is to try the tempis, to try um, the more advanced movements, whatever that is with your horse. But don't get stuck there. Don't be afraid to go back to the basics and, and do that circle. Advance, make more difficult, see if you can get it done, and then go back and, and figure out, okay, I need more control here. I need more refinement here. I need to change more on my aid. I need, you know, those things. So you're just doing that circle. Advanced, basic, advanced, basic, advanced, basic. Don't stay too long either. Like, don't just get stuck in that advanced place failing um i read a book once i was talking about humans it was talking about how we want to hit this in in our practice sessions this is kind of a broad subject but in our practice sessions we want to get to like 75 percent success rate um and that's going to build our confidence this is kind of like it's not necessarily true but um, I do find that if we can get to a, a higher success rate with the horses and build their confidence and everything we set in front of them, they will be better. Um, but that said, we're not perfect horsemen. I'm not a perfect horseman. I don't set my horse up perfectly all the time. Um, that when I'm around really good horsemen, that's something they're brilliant at doing, um, is setting the horses up for success. Okay, let's go through some of these comments here. Let's see, from the UK. Hi, Barbara. Ben Barnes, what are your favorite beaches to ride in? I ride in Picurs. Um, it's like, it's hard for me to buy breeches because anytime I go to like a tax store or anything, they don't have good ones. So I've been stuck riding in Picurs for uh, a long time and uh, I know the size, it's like a 102, which is kind of a weird size, um, at least for the U.S., but um, 102s, which is like the long version of those breeches, and they always fit me really good, and I always uh, wear th that kind just because they work, and I don't really have that many other options as a guy. Um, let's see, Christoph. Hi, Joseph, how are you? I'm very good. Um, see you next weekend in Langley. Yeah, I'm off to Langley uh, next weekend for a clinic. So um, that'll be good. I haven't been there yet. I'm excited to go and uh, see, what, see what that whole area is about. I've been to Victoria a few times um, and I've flown through the Vancouver airport many times, uh, a few times on the way to Calgary or Edmonton. Um, but I've never gotten off in Edmonton, so or in uh, Vancouver, so that'll be fun. Um, how do I build up my horse's behind muscles, Barbara? Um, few things here. Um, there's a lot of different ways. The more you teach your horse to be in self-carriage, the more they're going to build the right muscles. Um, if you're holding your horse together, they're going to build the wrong muscles. If you're in, more in self-carriage, they're going to build the right muscles. But there's, there's a bunch of things you can do. Um, walk your horse. It may sound like a, a little thing, but we have a walker over there. Um, in hand, 20 minutes, walk fast. If you're, if you're walking in hand, it's something that our walker is that thing right there. Um, but walk your horse fast because what happens when we hand walk horses on the ground is we don't walk fast enough. Um, we want to hit that speed where they're in like an extended walk and they're swinging over the back. Okay. Um, just like if I'm, if I'm riding Finch here and I'm walking that walk, if I'm, uh, on the ground, that's a fast walk. Um, a very fast walk. And so if you're hand walking your horse, uh, walk them fast. Um, thing number two, this is a big one actually. And horses that I, um, want to build up their back muscles. I will do this on a lot. Um, especially if I have a good place to do it. And that is 
backing up hills. I made a YouTube video about this a long time ago. Um, you can do it under saddle. You can do it from the ground. Um, but if you ever back your horse up a hill and do it from the ground, you can see um, their back muscles work. You can see them get the croup under themselves um, in dressage. Uh, the rein back is the very first movement that we have in dressage that introduces collection. Um, and it is also, in my opinion, one of the most underutilized movements in dressage. Um, and so the, the nature of the rein back is such that it makes them strengthen the back. If we think of gymnasticizing horses and fitness with horses, um, the rein back is a tool that we can use to get our horses stronger. And it's a tool that's used a lot more in the Western disciplines than in the dressage uh, disciplines. So think outside the box with the rein back too. Uh, I do some backing circles on my horses. Uh, you can back them with the haunches in or the haunches out. Um, so either the flexion to the inside of the circle or the flexion to the outside of the circle. Um, to the outside of the circle is actually easier, more basic. To the inside of the circle is more difficult. It's more like haunches in going backwards. Um, but the rein back and not just four steps that you get them moving free, pulling backwards from the hind leg, lifting the back up. The rein back is really a very good exercise to strengthen the back. Um, another thing I'm just kind of throwing it all at you here. So take what you want, leave what you don't like. Um, of all the gates to strengthen the back and strengthen the horses, my favorite is the canner. Um, a lot of walk canner, canner walk transitions. The nature of the canner is a better gate to strengthen our horses than the trot in general. Um, with the hind leg coming under, lifting the body up. Um, so that's, that's another one to get our horses stronger. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things there to talk about. Uh, uh, fitness and getting the back stronger and everything. Um, but yeah, walk your horses 20 minutes before you start. Even like this, I'm, I'm on YouTube. I've been on here 18 minutes, just walking bench, you know, um, it's so for them just to get them a little more fit. Uh, and like I said at the beginning, the self carriage is really important. Okay. Let's see. See, See you next weekend in Langley. Yeah, Langley. Um, let's see. A few people from Langley on here. Hi, guys. Excited to see you guys. I heard, so my clinic in Langley, um, I've never been there, but uh, it's full and it has a wait list and they want me back before I've even been there. So that's kind of exciting. Um, Julie from Denmark. Hi, Julie. Um, what do you do with this? She's, it's tough sometimes to answer horsemanship questions uh, without seeing the horse. So the most accurate answer to this question and most horsemanship question, questions in general is it depends. <laughs> um, I know that's not really that helpful, but it is because what that means is you have to adjust to each individual situation and fit your horse off where the holes are, how do we support them? How do we take smaller baby steps to get them uh, more support? So that means how do we, how do we support them? Um, and how do we get through a moment of fear, uh, a moment of crisis and, and teach the horses to be more solid? So first thing I go to as an in-hand person, as a groundwork person is if I'm on top of them and they're young and they're athletic and they're fast um, and I can't really outride them, if they're going to buck me off, I'm, I'm toast. So I have to find a way to be able to, um, to support them from the ground and do um, 
things on the ground that are going to kind of bring up that um, moment of fear and then support them through that moment of fear. Um, but I also think that here's a huge thing. Bend is, is a moment of power for the rider and for um, when you're on the ground. So if you're able to bend them like this, hola, that's Jess's dad over there. If you're able to bend them like this, um, you have a lot more control. You, you're, you're able to get control over the horse. So that's either like a one rein stop, um, but also in the groundwork, if you position them with a flag and you bend them and you get them to let go, um, in crisis mode, what you're trying to teach them is you still, even if you're afraid, you have a place to go, but you cannot run away. Um, and you cannot freeze. The other thing mentioned in that comment is she's, she's not receptive to desensitization. Well, I would be cautious with that just blanket statement. I don't necessarily want to desensitize my horses. I want to sensitize them to the right aids, to my support. Um, so my goal is not to make them unafraid of everything and that they stand still for everything. It's that they're accepting of the aids and they're soft and they're supple and their feet can move. Um, if we just work on desensitization, sometimes what happens is the feet get stuck. So they stand still, they endure the pressure until they have to explode and then they explode. Um, so my goal is not to just desensitize my horses. I don't think it's a terrible word. There are times where I'll work to expose them to things, but I want to make sure that I can bend them and I can yield them from the ground and get more acceptance to the aids that then transfers over under saddle. Um, the other thing is like, are they, you're just going through the checklist. Are they girthy? Are they bucking with the saddle? How do you, uh, resolve those types of things and um, go through that checklist of, of all the things that you can do. Um, and, and if they're just being started, yeah, you do all the groundwork, all the pieces on the ground to make sure you're not going to get bucked off. Um, but it's a, big, it's a big leap. And if they already had one bad experience, you're... Um, it's going to take some fixing. So if you can prevent the bad experience from happening in the first place, that's the best thing to do. If you can't, um, what you need to do is try to get enough good experiences in there um, that you can lead them in a different direction. Let's see. Who's the favorite horse that I've ever ridden? Melissa. Uh, that's too hard a question to answer. There's a lot of really good horses that I've ridden through the years. Um, good, difficult horses. Uh, George, which is the horse that I rode U25 Grand Prix on. Um, super difficult horse, but just a fantastic horse. I love that horse. Uh, there were horses when I was young, Frodo, that I got bucked off of many, many times that also taught me a ton about horsemanship and life and um, yeah, all kinds of, all kinds of ones. That's a tough question to answer. There's a lot of, a lot of them that stick in my mind though. Finch is up there for sure. Um, I had watched your video about backing uphill to improve back muscles a year ago and I've incorporated it into my five-year-old's routine. According to the saddle fitter, his back muscles have improved. Yeah, I mean, backing up hills, um, Here's another thing with this advice that I give people on here. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Um, that's really important because there's lots of advice that I can give that's just, you know, it really depends on the horse, it depends on how you do it. So it's, it's not that easy to just answer um, at all. Let's see, hello from Florida. I love watching your videos, they're so helpful. I have a miniature driving horses. I have no experience driving horses. Um, 
I don't really know much about that, um, so I'm not much help. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll keep these up, guys. I'll try to keep these up. I was thinking about doing like a. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to my filmmaking, um, doing YouTube videos, more produced videos, not just these lives. But I have some ideas that I want to work on with that, and uh, hopefully those will be coming soon. So uh, unfortunately, one of those ideas was about showing, which, as I said at the beginning of this, is kind of on the back burner due to a virus, horse virus that we have in the area. So, all right, signing off. Uh, we will see you guys in the next one. Say bye to Finchie.